Freedom Rider. She didn't care if the whole world looked. Joan of Arc with the Lord to guide her. She was a sister who really could. Isadora was the first bra burner. Angel that she showed up. The country was falling apart. Betsy Ross got it all sold up. And then there's Maud. 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 That uncompromising, enterprising, anything but tranquilizing. Right on, Maud. Philip must be feeling better, Florida. He ate two helpings of ice cream, and he kept them down. Is that game mail? Yeah, on the desk. It's none of my business, but how come most of your letters have MS in front of your name? That's the result of women's lib. You know, all men are called Mr., so we can't tell if they're married or single. But with women, we're either Miss or Mrs., so you know if they're married or single or not. Anyway, to make things equal, we have this new designation in front of our names. M.S., pronounced Ms. But, honey, that ain't new. We've been saying that for years. <laughs> Ms. Carol. <laughs> well, you do understand the Ms., don't you, Florida? Oh, sure. Right now, you're divorced, and you're liberated, and you're mighty proud of that Ms. in front of your name, but you're also looking for a husband. And something tells me, as soon as you find him, you're gonna go screaming down the street, I'm a Mrs. I'm a Mrs. Hi, Carol. Hi, Hi Florida. Florida. Sorry. I guess I'm a little early for the game, huh? No, Mother's late. Where is she? Beats me. Last time she was this late, she was trying to talk herself out of a speeding ticket. How'd she make out? Not too bad. Paid $50 for the speeding and $50 for the talking. <laughs> Hi, <Hello>. Maud. <laughs> Mother, it's after 8 o'clock. Carol, I'm proud of you. Only 27 years old and already you tell time. <laughs> You, that's all. Where have you been? Where have I been? I was out skating with Peggy Fleming. <laughs> Mother, what are you talking about? Carol, life is just a bowl of cherries. Do you know who wrote that song? A deranged fruit peddler. <laughs> hey, how about me? Do I even get a hello? Hello, Vivian. <laughs> now leave me alone. What do you mean? What is wrong with you? What is Carol? What do you mean? If there was something wrong, don't you think you'd see it in my behavior? <laughs> now, please, until you have something to go on, let me alone. No, no. <laughs> All right, Mother, if that's the way you want it. I've got to check on Philip. He's got a touch of the flu. Oh, and Walter called. His plane gets in at 8.30, and he'll take a cab home from the airport. Walter. Walter. Oh. Maud, you've got to stop hitting oh, yourself. I can't, Vivian. The pain takes my mind off. Off what? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> oh, well, look, why don't I just get the hell out of here, then? Vivian? You leave me alone at a time like this, and I'll rip your heart out. Well, then tell me what's the matter. Am I your best friend or not? Now, oh, what is Vivian, it? Vivian, Vivian. Vivian, how long have we known each other? 22 years. 22 Mom. years. We've been through an awful lot together. Oh, a lot. Six husbands, your two, my four. <laughs> right. For 22 years, Vivian, we've been, we've been everything to each other. I mean, there wasn't a confidence that we couldn't share. We've, we've been like sisters, Vivian. Like, like sisters, Maud. Then can I trust you to keep a secret? <laughs> what is it? Don't look at me, Viv. <laughs> Vivian, I'm pregnant. <laughs> You're kidding. Aren't you? You're pulling my leg, Maud. Maud? Maud, please pull my leg. 
Vivian, at age 62, I'll be the mother of an Eagle Scout. <laughs> I don't believe it. No, they made a mistake. Laboratories make mistakes. There's no mistake, Vivian. The rabbit died. <laughs> No doubt. Maud, you're a grandmother. With an eight-year-old grandson. Vivian, do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means that I live in a house where an uncle is about to inherit his nephew's potty seat. <laughs> of my life. I mean, Carol is bound to get married again. I was even thinking about having the, the sofa recovered and getting new carpeting. I was even toying with the idea of having my eyes done. <laughs> I was back to Dr. Spock and spit up and... <laughs> Poor Philip, he's throwing up again. I might as well go up and practice with him. <laughs> Vivian, you tell her. Oh, no, not me. Mother, what's wrong? Now, you've got to share this with me. Honey, I'd give anything to share this. <laughs> Vivian, please, please. All right, Carol, come here, honey. Let me try to tell you something. Yeah, Carol, you remember when you were just a little girl, maybe, oh, five or six years old, and you used to come to me and you'd say, Auntie Vivian, you know my mommy, too. You tell her for me, I want a little brother or sister. You remember that? Oh. Well, honey, your mother has finally decided to grant your wish. You're putting me on. You've got to be putting me on. Mother, tell me it's not true. All right, it's not true. <laughs> now, just promise me you won't get jealous and hit the baby! <laughs> but how did it happen? You're 47 years old. Walter's 49. This is no time to be having a baby. No time for who to be having a baby? Miss Carol. Oh, not me, Florida. Mrs. Cavanaugh? Oh, not me, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just figuring how many yards of tubing it'll take from the exhaust pipe to the rear window. <laughs> Look, there's only one sensible way out of this. You don't have to have the baby. Oh, what'll I do? Trade it in for a volleyball on Let's Make a Deal? <laughs> well, I'm leaving. Maud, if you're sorry, I'm sorry. Thanks, Floyd. I appreciate it. Good night. Good night. Good night, Florida. Good night, Florida. Good night, Florida. Listen, Mother, give me this. You don't have to think that way anymore. It's legal now. You know, she's right. It's legal in New York State. You better give that a thought. I have given it a thought. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, Mother, I'm so sorry. Oh, save it, Carol. She'll need it more later. Say, in about six months, when she looks like a water buffalo in one of those little flowered tents. <laughs> Thanks, Vivian. I really needed that. Maud, you haven't told Walter yet, have you? You think he'll be pleased? Well, let me put it this way, Vivian. You know how pleased I am. Walter will be twice as pleased. <laughs> Here comes Arthur. Arthur? Oh, I forgot we're playing bridge tonight. Look, Carol, Vivian, please sit down. Not a word, not a word. If Arthur Harmon found out that at my age I was pregnant, he'd laugh himself sick. <laughs> Arthur, how did you find us? I'm sorry, Marty, it's not you. It's just I keep seeing that dumb look that Walter's going to have on his face when he finds out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Monty, really, honestly, I am, but I can't help it. That dumb look on Walter's face keeps popping up into my mind. Hi, babe. Hi, Carol. 
How did you find out, Arthur? You tortured my gynecologist, didn't you? Well, Dr. Tarpin and I happened to intern together at Bellevue. We also happened to have offices on the same floor. So uh, when I saw you leaving with that expression on your face, I just will... Uh... <laughs> anyway, congratulations, little mother. <laughs> little mother. Arthur Harmon, that is the most... Why do you have to come out with that? Good idea. Come on, Mother, it'll take your mind off of things. Only if we play for the next nine months. <laughs> Ma, one thing I don't understand about all this. Weren't you using the pill? No, it gives me migraines. What did you do, Mother? Cross your fingers? <laughs> You're not going to tell me you were using some old-fashioned method. Bingo! When the old-fashioned thing happened, I got pregnant. <laughs> now, wait a minute. There's no such thing as old-fashioned. Hippocrates described the IUD thing over 2,000 years ago. Oh, it's so unfair. They can put a man on the moon, but women are using the same birth control method. Oh, come on, girls. Let's play. It's my bed. And I say, uh, pass. I don't even have to arrange these. Two no trump. Pass. Pass. Maud, your partner just bid two no Trump. That means you're supposed to let her know what's in your hand. There, look! Mother! <laughs> I think all three of you are getting nutty on this subject. Now, Maud, I grant you that the autumn years of life is not the ideal time to be raising a baby. The but... autumn years of life. <laughs> Arthur, leave it to you to sound just like a Hallmark card. Uh, how can you be so insensitive? Not just to my mother. Arthur, when are men going to take some responsibility for birth control? It's happening. It's happening. Vasectomy, for example. More and more men are talking about vasectomy all the time. Huh. Walter's been talking about it for two years. Take it from me, Arthur. Talking about it doesn't work. <laughs> Harry Adams just had a vasectomy. Good man, Adams. Good man, Adams. Arthur, one man's vasectomy is not the answer. Look, the way things are going, if, if even older people like my mother and Walter start behaving like rabbits, well, we're all gonna end up living like sardines. Beautifully put, Carol. <laughs> I mean, it's not every mother that gets to be called a rabbit. <laughs> Mother, that's not what I meant. I just meant he's such a show. Honey, you didn't mean it. Why? 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 <laughs> Hi, some little power you guys are having over there. Hi, Carol, Vivian. Hi. Hello, Arthur. Maud. How's my baby? <laughs> Am I glad to be back from that appliance convention? And Maud, do I have a surprise for you? <laughs> he has a surprise for me. Folks, oh, you're not going to believe this. But I, Walter Findlay, am going into Japanese appliances. Come on, what's going on here? I just said I was going into Japanese appliances. Is that all I get from you? Walter, Mother has something to tell you, too. Carol! Mother, there is no sense in delaying anything. Carol, Carol, how can you do this to me? What are they doing? What are they doing? Right, all right, all right, all right, I'll tell him. You might as well, Maud. You're the dummy. <laughs> Come into the kitchen. What's the matter? Did you wreck the car again? Did you hear that, everybody? Did you hear that? Not Maud, are you sick? Or Maud, are you unhappy? Or even Maud, are you pregnant? No, Maud, did you wreck the car again? All right, you're right, darling. I mean, you're absolutely right, and I'm sorry. So tell me, sweetheart, are you sick? No. Are you unhappy? No. Are you pregnant? Yes. <laughs> How did he take it? 
I don't know who's looking the other way. Mother, aren't you worried about Walter alone in there? All the knives are dull and he can't fit into the blender. Why don't I go and check? Stay where you are. Look, if there were anything wrong with Walter, I'd be the first to know. <laughs> It's taking it pretty well. I think there's something wrong with him. He just loves my chicken. <laughs> There is something wrong with him. He's choking. Get some bread from the kitchen. Oh, no. Just sit down here. What happened? Chicken? A chicken? Oh, it's all my fault. It's all my fault. I should never have mentioned the baby. Oh, good. Take it down. Just take it down. 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 Take it Listen, Walter, before you swallowed the bone, did you hear what I told you? Uh, is there anything you want to say? What is it? If it's true, give me another chicken leg. It's a mistake, isn't it, Arthur? It's a fault pregnancy. They happen all the time, don't they? The tests were positive, Walter. But it must be something else, something that's going around, like the measles. <laughs> Maud, we've seen enough movies together. This is the place in the movie where they say we're kidding. You were kidding, right? We're not kidding, Walter. The rabbit died. <laughs> I know how he feels. <laughs> Arthur, in 13 years, I'll be the 62-year-old father of an Eagle Scout. <laughs> There's the look. <laughs> Mark, you should see it. I knew he'd do it. And there it is. <laughs> Arthur, my life is flashing in front of me, and you're laughing. Oh, never mind about him, Walter. Who are you to get upset? Nothing's going to happen to you. You're not the one that has to carry this baby. She's right. I am the one who's going to have to sit in that doctor's office with all those pregnant 25-year-olds. Yep. One look at you, and they'll probably laugh themselves into premature labor. <laughs> Maud, I'm leaving. I think you want to be alone with Walter. I don't want to be alone with that man again as long as I live. <laughs> I don't blame you. Walter, what can I say? Try good night, Vivian. Good night, Vivian. You too. Uh... I'm going. I'm going. I just want to say one word before I go. I want both of you to look on the affirmative side of this thing. I mean, look at it this way. If it's a boy, Walter will have someone to carry on his name. Arthur, from now on, Walter's name is Mud. You want to name a kid Mud? You get pregnant. <laughs> well, what can I say? Rock's a rock. I to go with your Japanese appliances. <laughs> <laughs> Better make me a double. I'm drinking for two, you know. Excuse me. I think I'll check up on Philip. Well, I don't know what to say. I know it's crazy, but I'm excited about this. And if I'm excited about it, I should be happy about it. But I'm not, Maud, I'm not. I understand. I went too old. I mean, it's not going to be any fun having a two-year-old who can beat you up the stairs. <laughs> but the time will come, Ward, when we'll be free again. I mean, the child grows up, goes to college, meets a girl or a fella, and gets married. 
then gets a divorce, moves back into the house, probably with an eight-year-old kid. God'll get you for that one. I think he already has. Phillips is asleep. You know, I've been thinking. There is no earthly reason for you to go through with this at your age. You know it, I know it, Walter knows it. I don't want it. you to talk of just no, don't talk about it. I didn't it now, say please. anything, but now that you mentioned it, it's legal in New York now, isn't it? Oh, of course it is, Walter. Mother, I don't understand your hesitancy. When they made it a law, you were for it. Of course, I wasn't pregnant then. <laughs> Mother, it's ridiculous. My saying this to you, we're free. We finally have the right to decide what we can do with our own bodies. All right, then will you please get yours into the kitchen? <laughs> You're just scared. I am not scared. You are, and it's as simple as going to the dentist. Now I'm scared. <laughs> Mother, listen to me. It's a simple operation oh. now. But when you were growing up, it was illegal. And it was dangerous, and it was sinister, and you've never gotten over that. Now, you tell me that's not true. It's not true. And you're right. I've never gotten over it. It's not your fault. When you were young, abortion was a dirty word. It's not anymore. Now, you think about that. You know, Maud, you got one hell of a daughter. Oh, Walter, it's so silly. It's really dumb. I mean, it's... It's not just that I'm scared. It's like deep down inside me, there's a teeny part of me that feels guilty for even thinking about it. Well, I'll tell you this, Maud. Whatever you decide is going to be all right with me. Thank you, Maud. I'll tell you something else, too. To make sure this doesn't happen again, <laughs> I'm going to have that vasectomy. You really mean that? Why not? It's a simple operation. Like going to the dentist. <laughs> well, maybe I ought to think about it. <laughs> and you, Mort? I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'll just have to think about it, too. Sweetheart. Whatever you decide. Walter, don't pat me there. <laughs> That's what started this whole thing. Boy, I bet Mother never slept a wink last night. Nope, you're wrong. I don't understand it, but she slept like a log. Good morning, Mort. Good morning, Mother. Quiet, not another word. I don't want anything to knock this dream out of my head. All last night, I was the heroine of a soap opera. There's always tomorrow. As an infant, I was left on a coal miner's doorstep. Spent my formative years with a band of roving gypsies. Grew up and married an Italian nobleman, and at age 47, I got pregnant. And now, some scenes from next week's Ma. <laughs> now, the point I'm trying to make, honey, is that I am going to have this baby because Walter wants it. Well, no, I don't think so, Arthur. The way Maud was tossing and turning last night, I just know she wants to have that baby. Walter. I've decided to have the baby. I mean, a woman has a right to know how her husband feels. I think you know how I feel, Maud. I want whatever you want. And I want what you want, Walter. Then it's settled. Because I trust you to know what I want. <laughs> anyway, you won't have to make this decision again. Wait a minute, Walter. 
Walter, what's that supposed to mean? I spoke to Arthur, and he spoke to Dr. Mingo, and he arranged for me to get a vasectomy after golf. A vasectomy after golf? It sounds like a new play by Noel Coward. Welcome to part two of Maud's Dilemma. Morning, Carol. Morning, Florida. Where's your mother? She hasn't come down yet. I think she's still in shock. So am I. I just can't believe your mother is pregnant. Neither can my mother. <laughs> Tell you what. Stork ever flew over my chimney again, my husband will fly right out the door. <laughs> Hello, Junior. Goodbye, Senior. <laughs> oh, boy. Good morning, Mother. Carol. Morning, Mother. <laughs> Watch it, Florida. Look who's telling who to watch it. Did you have a bad night? Uh, flesh crawling. <laughs> Honey, I dreamt I gave birth to the most beautiful baby with an eight-foot stainless steel umbilical cord. <laughs> they couldn't cut it. <laughs> I woke up dragging Walter halfway across the bed by his pajama string. Well, you don't look very well. Oh, honey, I have the world's worst cold. I have a case of morning sickness that makes me feel like I'll live maybe tops 11 minutes. What a fate. Nine months of having you tell me I don't look well. Eight months, Mother. You're already four weeks pregnant. Oh, look, Mother, you're not going to go through with this. I keep forgetting, is black coffee good or bad for a woman in my condition? Well, it keeps you awake. Bad. That's what got me in my condition. <laughs> Mother, you don't have to have the baby. Look, I've told you before, there's no reason to feel guilty, and there's certainly no reason to be afraid. You're like talking to a stone wall. A pregnant stone wall. <laughs> oh, Carol, honey. Honey, I really have been listening to you, and I've done a great deal of soul-searching, believe me. You're going to have the baby. That's right, Carol. Mother, please, you can't. Look, you told me yourself, Dr. Tarpin said, for you to have a baby at your age could be very now, risky. honey, you know Dr. Tarpin. He's an old fuddy-duddy. Look, Lucille Granger had a baby just last year, and she was 49. Yes, and she looks 59. I feel 71. <laughs> Now, the point I'm trying to make, honey, is that I am going to have this baby because Walter wants it. Walter wants it? He told you that? No, well, he didn't come right out and say it, but he was up half the night tossing and turning. Honey, I'm sure Walter wants the baby. How do you know he wasn't tossing and turning because he doesn't want the baby? Honey, I know the man. Look, when you were married, didn't you know what was on your husband's mind? If I'd known what was on his mind, I would have divorced him six months sooner. <laughs> Well, anyway, I know Walter like a book. So you're having a child at your age just to please him? Well, it's only fair. I mean, look what he did to please me. <laughs> Miss Finley, can I get into your bathroom now? Not unless you want to jump in the tub with Mr. Finley. <laughs> After what you're going through? No, thanks. <laughs> I will finish up in the kitchen. Miss <laughs> Mother. There's something you're not talking about. How do you feel about having the baby? Well, to tell you the truth, honey, I just don't know. I mean, part of me really wants to have the baby, and part of me, well, I don't know. Anyway, I know Walter will be very pleased if we have the baby. He's never been a father before. Well, I've never heard him complain about it. You know, you could be reading him wrong. Not a chance, honey. I know Walter. Sweetheart, do you realize that he is almost 50 years old? This is his bid for immortality. He'll have a son to carry on his name. Suppose he gets a daughter. Well, the way things are going today, a daughter could carry on his name, too. <laughs> Mother, if you are so sure that Walter wants a baby, I don't see why you can't just come right out and ask him. Honey, there's no need to. Look, if he didn't want the baby, he would tell me. But if he did want the baby, which he does, he wouldn't even mention it because he wouldn't want to influence me. Look, Mrs. Finley, if he ain't out of that tub yet, he is going to look like a prune. <laughs> well, by the way, what's the latest word on the baby? 
Well, everybody else has voiced an opinion. How about you, Florida? Well, my opinion is this. I don't do windows, and I don't do babies. <laughs> Mother, I don't think you realize how difficult it's going to be for a woman your age to have a baby. Oh, honey, listen, no matter how difficult it is, it can't be as difficult as it was when I was carrying you. Now, that's right, Carol, because when I was pregnant with you, we were very, very poor. You know what it's like to be pregnant and poor? Boy, I remember I used to have to go to a laundromat twice a week. Oh, I hated that place. It was loaded with perverts. <laughs> I loved to sit in front of the machines and watch the nylon panties go round and round. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I went into labor in that same laundromat, somewhere between rinse and spin dry. <laughs> The next thing I knew, I was in a hospital where a nurse handed me a brown paper bag and told me to deposit my undergarments. Oh, Carol. She stood there while I slowly died of embarrassment. You see, I had run out of underwear and I was wearing your father's boxer shirt. <laughs> I was right. He looks like a prune. <laughs> Mother, that was a heart-rending story. But I would still rather see you having a baby when you're, you're poor and young than when you're 47. What a lousy break. Most women your age have already been through menopause. No, no, sweetheart, but you know me. I just haven't had the time. <laughs> However, tomorrow morning, I'll put it on my calendar. Things to do. Change life. <laughs> finished. <laughs> Him, Tarzan, me, Jane. That must be Lorraine Cochran. She's picking Philip up. She's got the carpool today. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Philip will be down in a minute. Okay, I'll be right back, kids. Play nice now. Hi, kids. Lorraine, honey, you know, you are really an amazing person. I mean, four small children, and you're in your early 40s. Oh, it's nothing, really. Listen, Maude, do you mind if I visit your powder room? Uh, keep an eye on the kids for me, will sure. you? Hello? Am I what? Am I watching television? Oh, wait a minute, what is this, one of those rating services? Oh, yeah, yeah, would you just hold on for just a minute? Yeah, don't go away, please. <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy, stop honking the horn! Jimmy, stop honking the horn! Look, I'm gonna count to three, and then I'm gonna come out there and rip your little heart out. <laughs> That's a good boy. My foot. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, you know, this is the first time that one of your services has ever called me. Yeah, well, of course I'm watching television. Yeah, the name of the program is The End of the World. <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy, will you let go of that dog's tail? Jimmy! Doggy! Sick Jimmy! You're kill! Kill! <laughs> Jimmy, if you want to pull something, pull your sister's hair. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Mother, what are you screaming uh, about? What's going on? The Cochran kids with some kind of a plot to drive me mad. Well, it looks like oh. they succeeded. <laughs> oh, Maud, I almost forgot. Congratulations. I understand you're preggy. <laughs> preggy? Preggy. Oh, yes, Carol. You see, on top of everything else, I'm preggy. <laughs> I'll let you in on a little secret. I am, too. You're kidding. Oh, well, of course you can't tell. I mean, I'm not showing yet. <laughs> Actually, we had planned at stopping up four. Four's a nice family, Lorraine. Why didn't you? I couldn't do that. I mean, each to his own, but I couldn't. I, d I don't think it's right for me to make that kind of a decision. Besides, what's one more kid? <laughs> oh, listen, by the way, Maud, are you nursing? 
Uh, no, I was just having coffee. <laughs> my copy of The Art of Breastfeeding. You'll love it. <laughs> the Art of Breastfeeding. Do you realize, Carol, now it's an art? Like French cooking. <laughs> Mother, look at you. You're shaking like a leaf. You were with those kids five minutes. They weren't Carol, even in the house. Please, please. I'm late for golf. I only got time for coffee. Oh, Walter, I'm crushed. I was planning on preparing you an eight-course breakfast. Not a chance. Ask him. Uh, Walter, I have a question for you. What is it? Walter, look, I have to know what you want. I want it black. <laughs> Walter, I'm talking about the baby. I mean, a woman has a right to know how her husband feels. I think you know how I feel, Maud. I want whatever you want. And I want what you want, Walter. Then it's settled. Because I trust you to know what I want. <laughs> anyway, you won't have to make this decision again. Wait a minute, Walter. What, Walter, what's that supposed to mean? I spoke to Arthur, and he spoke to Dr. Mingo, and he arranged for me to get a vasectomy after golf. <laughs> vasectomy after golf? It sounds like a new play by Noel Coward. <laughs> well, anyway, honey, you heard it for yourself. Walter is dying to have that baby. Mother, I didn't hear him say that. All I heard him say was that he trusts you to know what he wants. And I do, Carol. Listen, there is not a doubt in my mind, honey. Not a doubt. Because on top of everything else, last night in his sleep, he said, Maud, I want to have this baby. <sighs> well, why didn't you tell me that before? Because it's not true. <laughs> well, Carol, I just want to get you off my back. Now, listen, I am going to go ahead and have this baby because Walter wants it. So you might as well start getting used to it. Yes, and maybe even be a little happy about it, as I am. Oh, Carol, we're going to have a little toddler in the house. And if he's strong and healthy, maybe by the time he's six months old, he'll be smart enough to bust out of his playpen and run away from home. <laughs> Well, no, I don't think so, Arthur. The way Maud was tossing and turning last night, I just know she wants to have that baby. Did it ever occur to you she might have been tossing and turning because she doesn't want to have the baby? No, but you don't understand Maud. If she didn't want to have the baby, she'd have no problem in telling me. Instead, she tosses and turns and says nothing at all, which has to mean she wants the baby. What about you? Me? Yeah. I think it's terrific. I'll get a chance to read Goodnight Moon. <laughs> you ever read that, Arthur? Good night, little mouse. Good night, little house. Good night, shoes. Good night, socks. I prefer the, uh... <laughs> Frankly, I prefer the little choo-choo that could, you know? <laughs> I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I knew it could. I knew it could. I knew it could. I knew it could. Woo! Just between you and me, Walter, I don't know why Maud wants to have a baby at all. At her age, you know, there are certain risks. Well, don't underestimate the maternal instinct, Arthur. Besides, she may also be fighting the idea of abortion on moral grounds. And you don't want to interfere? I think I interfered enough already. <laughs> good night, nose. Good night, toes. Good night, eyes. You know, I hate to interrupt you, old buddy, but you don't have very much time before you have to go under the knife. <laughs> Arthur, mm. the operation, what's it like? A vasectomy? Oh, it's a very simple procedure, Walter. It's done right in the doctor's office. Snip, 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 and it's over. Oh. <laughs> Bert, double. Now, easy. You're responding to some kind of a primitive fear. It's irrational. You should know better. I do know better, but that doesn't help. Not when you were brainwashed as a child. I still line the seats in public johns. <laughs> My mother spent half a life telling me what I could get if I didn't. I guess we had the same mothers, Walter. You want to know what I do in public restrooms? What? 
Get ready. I flush with my foot. <laughs> we all have the same mothers, Arthur. All of us. Tell me something. What happens after? After the snip snip. <laughs> after the snip snip. Nothing. Except you can't make babies, that's all. And that's it? That's it. I don't change into a soprano, do I? <laughs> Come on, Walter. It has nothing to do with virility. Absolutely nothing. Listen, if you want to hear it right from the horse's mouth, Harry Lawrence is over there. He had a vasectomy. Harry! Hey, Arthur, please don't embarrass me. Don't worry. I'll be discreet. Hey, Arthur, How are you, Harry? All right, good to see you. Do you know Walter Finley? No, I don't. Harry Lawrence? It's a pleasure, Walter. Hi. Well, how's the dress business? Sensational. That's great. How do you like your vasectomy? <laughs> Discreet, Arthur. Very discreet. Walter here is planning to have one, too. Oh, good to you. Tell him about it. You'll really love it, Walter. It takes the worry out of being close. <laughs> Just a little joke. You happy you had it done, then? Happy isn't the word for it. Best thing I ever did. And everything's fine? Fine. Everything's better. Better? Sure. Helps my wife, too. She's like a kid again. The only trouble is she forgets I'm not. <laughs> One more question. Do you flush with your foot? <laughs> Good to see you again, Arthur. Good luck. <laughs> well, he didn't have the same mother we did, Arthur. No, I guess not. Well, the important thing is he was psychologically prepared for vasectomy. See, some guys are, and some guys aren't. Now, you're an ideal candidate for vasectomy. Easy going, devil may care. You're just what the doctor ordered. I gotta make a couple of calls on the way home. And you better be getting yourself over to Doc Mingle. Oh, yeah, sure, as soon as I finish this drink. Well, lots of luck, old buddy. And remember, be for vasectomy. <laughs> for vasectomy. <laughs> oh, hello, Dr. Mingo's office. This is Walter Findlay. Yeah, well, I want to cancel my 5 o'clock appointment. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll call back. I'll call back next year. <laughs> Hurry, darling. You must be exhausted. Now, really, Walter, playing 18 holes of golf, then having a vasectomy, and then working in the store till 9 o'clock, I mean, it's too much. <laughs> Maud. Maud. I have a confession to make. Yes, Walter? I shouldn't have gone to the store today. All I saw was a pop-up toaster. <laughs> What, 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 what are you doing? Honey, I'm helping you get into bed. Maud, I'm not an invalid. Come on. Oh, now, come on. Why are we going to bed so early? It's not even 10 o'clock. Sweetheart, yet. you don't have to go to sleep. I just want you to get into bed and rest. Come on. You can read. I bought you a new book today. The Art of Breastfeeding? <laughs> no, honey, the other one on politics. I don't feel like reading. Sweetheart. Did the doctor prescribe anything? I mean, ice packs or heating pad, aspirin, novelties. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, he just told me to stay off my feet, you know. Listen, honey, would you like a pickle? No, thanks. They probably go better with pregnancies than vasectomies. Maud. I'd like to tell you about today. Honey, I want to take your mind off today. Now, of course, I know what I usually do to take your mind off things, but what can we do now? I know what. How about a game of gin rummy? Okay. Gin rummy. Terrific idea. Gosh, Maud, it's been months since we played gin. I know.
Walter, I've decided to have the baby. I knew it. I told Arthur that would be your decision. I'm glad you're happy about it. You love being a father. Of course, Maud. Chin. <laughs> what do you mean, Chin? You picked up one card and you gin? Name of the game, Maud. Listen, honey. I was wondering. Well, now that you've had your vasectomy. <laughs> Well, if anything happened to me... More. No, 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 let me finish. Sweetheart, if anything happened to me and you wanted to get married again and you wanted to be a father again, but you couldn't... I mean, have you thought about that, boy? I never wanted to become a father before. Why should I want to become one later on? I don't understand you, Walter. I'm happy to become a father because you want to have a baby, not because I want to become a father. Jen. <laughs> Walter, what are you trying to do? You pick up two cards and you gin. Now, wait a second, Maud. Were you having the baby because you thought I wanted it? Well, you do, don't you? Sweetheart, would it disappoint you too much to learn that becoming a father was never one of my life's ambitions? I, I don't know why. For years, I used to feel guilty about it. For years, people told me I was nuts or selfish. How can I not love kids? Well, I do love kids, but they don't have to be mine. That's probably the worst confession I'll ever make. Do you hate me? Of course not, darling. I love you. I love you, and I love my life. Jen. I take it all back! <laughs> Cards and you're ginning out on me. Forget the cards, Mort. We have something much more important to talk about. What, you finally decided you do want a pickle. Mort, I want you to have whatever it is you want. Does that include the baby? Well, it did when... when I thought you wanted it. Well, Mort, I think it would be wrong to have a child at our age. Oh, so do I, Walter. Oh, Walter, so do I. We'd make awful parents. Oh, impatient, irascible. Awful. It's just oh, not our time well, of life. Well, for other people it might be fine, but for us, I, I don't think it would be fair to anybody. Oh, Walter, hold me closer. Are you frightened more about the operation, I oh, mean? Oh, don't be ridiculous, darling. Why should I be frightened? Were you frightened of the vasectomy? <laughs> I said, were you frightened about the vasectomy? I didn't have it. <laughs> well, you see, I was psychologically unprepared. You can ask Arthur. Uh -huh. Arthur's a doctor. Honey, he told it's me that. It's all right. It's all right. Just tell me, Walter, that I'm doing the right thing, not having the baby. For you, Maud, for me, in the privacy of our own lives, you're doing the right thing. I love you, Walter Finley. Was recorded on tape before a live audience. <laughs>